Hi, once I told you about my childhood resin, which actually was just glue with different stuff mixed in, like beads, plaster, and especially in summer, sand. So today I decided to get back to this technique and make a decorative plate and a pendant made of glue and sand. I have such a silicone mold shaped like a plate and I will also try casting these tiny molds if I have any resin left. But if I don't, I will simply make some more. Yep, the links to all the materials will be in the description. By the way, I bought a silicone spoon for babies, because I was so done with throwing away disposable spoons. Plus, this one won't break in a situation when resin is too thick. To be honest, in the very first video which I filmed, I already made the spoon dirty, and this mask still doesn't want to come off, but it doesn't really bother me. I have no idea whether I post this video or not, because even with my temper that situation really put me out of it. I don't really want to get back to that project, so please don't ask me about it. Now let's speak about sand. You can find it somewhere outside or buy it in a store. Yeah, that's right, in a store. In my local store there is even dyed sand, but I took the undyed one. It is quite fine, made of quartz, so it's perfect for us. And our glue will be this one, the wood glue. But you can also take paper glue. As far as I know, the only difference is in the amount of water in them. It means that, theoretically, this one will be drying a little longer, and this one you can mix with water, and it will be more profitable. I mix glue with sand by eye. Depending on glue and sand, whether it's fine or coarse, the proportions might differ a bit, so I will simply show you what substance you need to get. It's also convenient when you use silicone cups that you can simply press it like that and clean the spoon from this mass. I added a little of water, literally just a teaspoon, because the substance was too thick. Have a look, the substance starts to flow down when I don't touch it, it means that we've almost reached the right consistency. Then I added just a little more of glue. And now look at this, my substance starts to spread over, but it's still not really thick. That's the consistency what we need to achieve. Now we can pour it into the mold. Don't be afraid to get your hands dirty, because when glue is dry, it easily comes off your skin. Next, to spread our mixture evenly, leave sand as it is and let it fill the entire space by itself. Otherwise, you'll get too many air bubbles. It will be also good and necessary if you tap the mold, so all the bubbles which appeared during the mixing could come out. See? Like these ones. Pop! But it's kind of problematic to get rid of all of them, because the substance is too thick. So if you have a transparent mold, make sure there is no air inside, and if there is, tap these spots with a stick. I ran out of the sand and clay mixture, so to fill the small molds I needed to make some more. So I did it and filled the molds and left them dry. But it requires a lot of time. To be precise, it depends on the size of a mold. My little molds were drying under the sun for the whole weekend, and the plate I left under the sun for about three weeks. The most important thing is to protect it from rain, because if sand and glue get soaked, the previous days of drying will be ruined. <laughs> no, I managed to avoid it. I took out the dolphin and the crescent too early, they didn't manage to dry up completely, so their front side turned out to be quite uneven. But we can turn it into our favor. The second crescent I took out the next day, and it turned out even. Next goes the plate. A week under the sun was enough, and look how beautiful it is! The mold even made it glossy, so it's so smooth and feels nice. There were some bubbles, but in case of this plate, they looked pretty interesting. 
the mixture settled and left these uneven edges, so I had to green the surface. But it still was kind of rough, the table, and it… It didn't scratch it, but… Well, I decided to attach some protectors on it. I mean the chair pads. I attached them to the edges. It made everything much softer and better. As it is summer now and my plate is made of sand, I decided to decorate in the marine style. I had such tiny shells, stars and pearl half beads. And for the sea, I will take the same glue and acrylic paints. I squeeze out the glue and add a drop of paint into it. And then apply it in the form of a small wave. Then I add another color into it and apply everything. The same happens with the third color. I use glue instead of paint, because, first of all, I need to glue these shells to the sea. Secondly, it will be like a kind of resin art, so we could stir the paints prettily, and they will look more voluminous than if we simply drew these swirls with paint. In fact, later the glue will settle. I place the decor into the sea I also found this stone Maybe it's an old coral, I, I don't know, I placed it anyway A little of glitter to make the water glisten And we can leave it till it's dry Also, I wanted to show you how you can turn an uneven crescent into your favor when I just took it out of the mold, it reminded me of a semi-processed stone, like there are different grinded figures with a crystal druze inside, so I took a glossy varnish and mixed it with a dry mother-of-pearl pigment. So that's how I got a pearl paint, which you can use to cover a crescent. The main idea here is to apply a thin layer of paint to leave the surface rough. Then I took acrylics and began to outline the stone to make the spot look like a grinded edge. Stone accessories are usually framed with metal, like in these pictures, so I wanted to repeat this effect. For this I took Dutch metal glue and, of course, the Dutch metal. After 15 minutes of applying glue, you can attach the golden sheets. It's better to press and scrape them with a stiff brush. Screw a golden screw eye in and it's done. I decorated the dolphin in the same way. I understand that some of you would like to try making it by yourself, not only because you want to make it, but to be able to use these things. So I got curious, how solid these accessories were. So if you start breaking them in two, what I can say is that you need to try hard, because I failed. 
but these tiny details can break easily. But most of all, I got curious after thinking what would happen if I put them in water. If you take an art piece which is not protected with any varnish and make it completely soaked, like swimming with it or keeping under water like I did, eventually sand would start being washed out. And if you stop and dry it as it is, it will start looking even more like a processed stone. Especially if you add some paint later. But swimming with a brooch is less likely than getting into rain with a brooch, so I took the dolphin, which was covered with acrylic paint, and the Dutch metal was covered with varnish, and put it underwater for a while. And nothing happened to it. So if you are caught under the rain, theoretically nothing will happen to your accessories. I was more concerned with screwing off a screw eye, because when I tried to do it, the sand was quite loose, not as solid as I expected, so it will be better if you first make a tiny hole with a screw eye or any other thin thing, then take it out, grease the hole inside with glue and put the screw eye back, or grease with glue the outside to make the screw eye at least a little more secure. Because it will be quite sad if someone goes walking wearing a pendant and returns from the walk without it. I hope this video was interesting and useful for you. I love you this much. Bye!